How's it going, fellow Vanguard? It's Eden for Card Fight Calgary, and I am using a new camera. You can probably tell by the quality of this video. Um, I'm very excited. I finally got myself like a, a better camera, so things are gonna look a lot better now. And I'm gonna have to get used to not looking at this little viewfinder so I can see myself in this shot. But it's so helpful now because before I was using. Um, this little thing to record my videos. Now I can just uh, use this new one, and it's very nice. Uh, yeah. So enough of that. So a while ago, I asked you guys to uh, send me questions over Facebook pro to kind of sort of like you know promote the fact that I have a Facebook page associated to the channel, and I just kind of to interact with all you guys. So I'm gonna go through all this stuff and you know answer your questions that you had for me. So let's get started, shall we? Starting from the earliest comment I can find. Uh, Julian Dvaz? Dvaz? How do you, is that how you pronounce your name? Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. What was your first Vanguard deck? So, I started this game back when it was first introduced in English. Uh, 2009 around there. Or, not 2009. 2011 around there. And that's when the Blaster Blade and the Dragonic Overlord trial deck came out. And I picked up the Dragonic Overlord deck. I was first introduced because uh, like my friend showed me it and... Yeah, I just got really, I liked the new card, art, it looked cool, I wanted a break from Yu-Gi-Oh at the time, so there we go, I picked up the Kagura. Um, that was the first deck I had, but the first deck that I would consider to be like my first deck that I completed was the uh, Kokaitis build, uh, using the stuff from set 6 and set 2 and set 1. Uh, it was a mixture between Buskirk and Kokutis. I believe the well, the video of my one of my earlier builds is still on this channel. If you look deep deep, deep down enough, you probably find it. Um, it's probably somewhere in the card that I put up there. But yeah, that's one of my first few decks. <laughs> that was like the first deck I actually put together. So there we go. All right, this next comment comes from. Sergio Ramos, do you think you'll ever release a video about the tier each deck is as of GBT08? And what is your favorite upgrade from GBT08? One for each clan, please. Um, to be quite honest, I originally wanted to kind of do like a tier video for um, the current meta as a whole, but it, to be quite honest, like uh, tier tier lists and whatnot, are more so for like what's more popular to play. I believe every deck can be in format and be in tier, it's just how well you play it. It's really based on which clans are the most represented, because as you guys know right now, Gear Chronicle is the most represented right now in the meta, which is why TikTok is going to be put to one hopefully soon. It's already been implemented in the Japanese format, but yeah, really, really tiers and like uh, tier lists are just big popularity contests for really good decks and what's more popular. But to be I, I personally feel every deck can do well. You just have to play it correctly and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, and, and really, you just have to play your deck the way it's supposed to be played. Um, as for my favorite upgrades from GPT 08, uh, Fenrir, I really like the new stand trigger. Uh, it really puts a lot of like combos into it and makes their rear guards do more, which is something that uh, Genesis as a whole didn't really have. And of course, the infamous wise man loop um, that everyone's been talking about and everyone's been freaking out over. You can deal with it, guys. You just kind of know how to play against it. Uh, Link Joker. Um Link Joker didn't really get that much in terms of support, but it did get Flagellate, and Flagellate really enables you to have more plays, which is very nice. Um, the best thing about Flagellate Dragon is the Omega Lock, and the fact that you don't need to play Big Crunch anymore. Um, you can now, I know, like, I, while Big Crunch is still good, um, you might you rather have the upper like the free reign to lock whichever units you want. It doesn't have to be a column, so you can Omega Lock the front row now. And you can also Omega Lock your own cards, which is, uh, it can be important, depending on how things go your way, so, um, makes the new G-Guardian good. It makes playing against Vanquisher when the new support comes out a lot better to deal with, so there's that. Uh, yeah, there's, like, Joker. Royal Paladin's the only card that I really liked from that set was Fides, so... That's, that's all I can say. I don't like how Brave works. And if you're going to be playing Royal Paladins, you might as well just play the Blaster Blade core. Because it's honestly the most consistent and the, like, the strongest combination you can have when playing Royal Paladins. So if you're not playing with Blaster Blade, you're kind of just, you know, 
rowing up the creek without a paddle, to use that metaphor. Gold Paladin, I like the new cards. Um, there's only really two cards that made this set good, and that's uh, Radiant Dragon, the uh, new stride unit, and the new grade one, Hosea. The one where if it's Unite, and every unit you call gets plus 2k, and then the unit in front of it gets plus 2k, I think, or the unit called. It's, it's really good, that's really all I gotta say about it. Uh, that's from Gold Paladin. Pale Moon. Pale Moon's kind of iffy. Uh, I do appreciate more of the uh, Nightmare Doll stuff, which is good. It's just, you know, not the greatest thing in the world. Um, Magia didn't really get much. They got that new G Guardian, but it doesn't really help them anyway. Like, aside from selective soul charging, and if you're not playing Magia, the burst soul charge 3 is pretty good. And of course, Grand Blue. Grand Blue got a lot of like god gash and that thing is like honestly one of the best strides in the deck uh it makes night rolls more playable it gives seven seas more toolbox options uh and then and the one thing i didn't like about the new stuff from grand blue is that now we have this seven seas one rush deck and i can't believe it won singapore how do you guys let that win like come on <laughs> so that was uh sergio's comment let's move on to the next one if i can find it here megan dieze dietzi is that how you pronounce it? I'm sorry, Megan. How did you get into Vanguard? What is your favorite aspect with the game? Least favorite? What compels you to build a deck or get into a certain clan? Do you like Vanguard or Buddy Fight more? Sorry, all I could think of was Vanguard questions. First of all, don't worry. Thanks. Thank you. First, I, I'm appreciating your uh, contribution to this video and, you know, interacting with me. It's fun. Um, how did I get into the game? I mentioned before that a friend of mine showed me a Blaster, the Blaster Blade Trial deck, and it, the artwork really got to me. Like, it really, like, it was really cool, and I liked it. Um, I was, like, I was a huge fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! in my high school days, and uh, it just... Like, I just wanted kind of a break from it, I wanted to try something new, and I picked up Vanguard because I liked the artwork of it. The game mechanics were very different and I really enjoyed it, and eventually, ultimately, I quit Yu-Gi-Oh! to start playing Vanguard more professionally, more, really, you know, into the whole thing. So, that's how I got into Vanguard. Well, my favorite aspect about the game, the fact that you can play pretty much anything and win. As I mentioned, as I said before, uh, tier lists or just big lists of popularity contests and it's really up to you like you can make any deck good you just have to build it right and play it to the like best you can play it and deal with other people whose decks like can play against you like there are bad matchups and there are matchups that you're better against but if you play your deck the way it's supposed to be played you can win any every game you play you just you know gotta like play against what your opponent's playing and to outsmart them in a way and to like save your resources and whatnot so that's my view on it uh what's my least favorite aspect about it <laughs> um my least favorite aspect probably is the community what i mean i love you guys you guys are great but uh, <laughs> my only qualm is like whenever something a new car comes out the first thing people start talking about is if it's a bad card and um like i i feel like i'm guilty of it too sometimes but like i don't try to see how a card is bad i just try to see how you can use it and if it's like the best thing you can use of course there are cards in this game where they don't really do anything um that are like they don't really have any real what's the word i'm looking for benefit to being used in a deck but if you you can really use any card as long as you have the strategy using for it cards interact very interestingly in vanguard unlike Yu-Gi-Oh or like magic where it's kind of cut and dry you have to be really creative with how you use cards like uh since i play grand blue nothing is ever should be taken at face value like especially like in say night rose um like you could you have a lot of combos when it comes to cards and as long as you set up your field and manage your resources properly you can pretty much do whatever you want with it uh but yeah my least favorite is how it's not more about the game it's more about people so i guess that doesn't really answer the question if i were to say what my least favorite aspect about it it would probably be um Ooh, this is actually really tough. Uh, it would probably be the... Uh, <laughs> oh, what is my least favorite thing? I can't really think of anything that I don't like about Vanguard. Like, I, I like everything about it. It's just... Yeah, no. I, there's nothing I don't like about Vanguard. I love Vanguard. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What compels you to 
need to build a deck or a clan. Um, a lot of the times it has to do with the character that plays it in the show. Like I've mentioned in my top five Vanguard decks that I am a huge fan of Misaki. That's why I have the uh, OTT deck and um, you know, Misaki plays it and I play it. Uh, a lot of the times I might, I might have to do something with a card or um, maybe it's just the theme of the deck. Like I love pirates and I love water themed decks. So that's why I picked up Grand Blue back when I started out. And I'm going to be building Shadow Paladins because I really like Kazuma and I think he's a really interesting character. And he's something that Vanguard really hasn't had before. Like, he brought up a lot of firsts when he was introduced, so that's why I really want to build Shadow Paladin. Uh, other than that, maybe because I like a unit or a character. Really, it's just that sort of idea. Um, like, the reason, the, one of the first cards that actually got me hooked to Grand Blue was Death Seeker Thanatos, because I was a huge, because I am a huge fan of the Persona series, and Thanatos is one of my favorite personas, and the fact that he was a card in Vanguard, I picked up Grand Blue, and then I was a huge fan of One Piece, and I love water themed decks. It just, you know, everything just fell into place. That's why I play Grand Blue. <laughs> Yeah. And the last question, why do I like, do I like Vanguard or Buddy Fight more? I have to say Vanguard. Um, I do like Buddy Fight. It's a very interesting and different game, but I'd rather, like, if I were to, if I was ma forced to pick between one or the other, I would have to pick Vanguard. Because Buddy Fight, while it is a very fun game, and uh, it's just way too fast, I would say. It's not focused enough. And like uh, sometimes there are some combinations that can be like super busted and whatnot. Uh, at least I think. Um, I mean, I play heroines, and I don't think I'm gonna ever pick up another deck. Um, probably because uh, my community is really small, and we're kind of stingy with cards. I mean, I love those guys and everything, but um, when it comes to finding resources, it's really hard to get into other worlds. Unless you like buy into cases, which was just the case for me. That's how I got hero wins. Um, but you know, is resources is one thing for me. Another thing is it's just um, it's hard to really build something unless it's like pointed out in the show or you've been invested in, in the game long enough. So that's I rather pick Vanguard because it's a lot easier to pick up than it is buddy fight. So there's that. <laughs> okay, uh, next one. Uh, this is from Colby Hesh. Why is Vanguard not played in smaller cities? Because you're not trying hard enough to build your own community. All you need to do is find a friend, play the game with them, and then people will slowly see it and catch on. Uh, that's how Vanguard started in Calgary. Uh, the game came out, people were interested, people bought it, and then suddenly, boom, it's one of the biggest things in Calgary. A lot of people in uh, Calgary play Vanguard, and although locals has been not firing because people are stingy, but people love Vanguard, and you just gotta show them how great the game is. It's not like Yu-Gi-Oh, it's not like Magic, where you don't have to have a crazy initial investment to get into it. You just need to pick up a trial deck and start playing. So there's the, there you go. That's how that that's. I hope that answers your question, Kobe. You little troll. <laughs> uh, all right. Next question comes from Silvernet. All right. Uh, his question's kind of a bit long. Since no one asked you how to feel compelled to one, any plans to include more members to upload on CBC on the channel? I'd like to see more variety every now and then. Top three waifus of Vanguard. I don't know. Felt interesting. And three top three retro great three Vanguards from season one, maybe season two. But you'll most likely include the break units. All right. So number one, uh, any plans to include more members? Yes. Um, it's just been kind of hectic with my schedule. Again, I'm in, I'm a second year or I'm in my final year of uh, my po my schooling for uh, post secondary, and I'll be graduating this year, so I'll be more focused on this hopefully. Um, it's just that also my friends also have other schedules and then when we were hanging out at locals we'd rather be just playing Vanguard rather than working so there's that. Like right now it's just me and Sean uh, who really puts up content on it but um, uh, my other friends really have other uh, points of views and stuff like that so uh, they, they, I like talking with them all and like getting different perspectives is great and I will be putting more people on don't you worry. Uh, number two top three waifus of Vanguard okay number one is Om because she plays Grand Blue uh, that she's just honestly my favorite character in the entire series right now. Her story was so good. She was a well-developed character, and 
yeah, there you go. Uh, number two is Misaki. Uh, I was always big, big fan of Misaki since the beginning. Um, again, I've talked about before. She plays OTT, blah blah blah. Um, I'm a huge fan of voice actresses, uh, Kita Izumi and Caroline Day. Um, I got to meet Caroline once. That was pretty cool. And then if I were to pick a third one, it would probably be Kumi because I think Kumi is really cute and um, I don't know. I just love her character. You know, she's like the innocent. Uh, support character and like uh, she just you know this is really cool and she plays battle sisters and because of the new support I think battle sisters is gonna be a really good deck really soon so there's that if we're gonna talk about units number one would be night rose um, because night rose is awesome. avatar there you go uh, number two I would probably have to say I would say maybe Asha because I play I still have neo nectars floating around somewhere in my room but uh Actually, no, no, no. She would be number three. Number two would be uh, Amaterasu. Like, like I, I have to relate it to my character somehow. Amaterasu is, like, one of my favorite OTT units, and I'm kind of sad she's not really supported anymore. She does have the Legion, but, um, you know, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but... Hey, it's good. Uh, well, I like Amaterasu. You like to cheat <laughs> when she's uh, in your Vanguard circle. And cheating in OTT is a lot of fun. That's why I play Magus as well. So there you go. And then top three retro grade three Vanguards. Uh, CEO Amaterasu has to be number one. Just because you can... Uh, well, first of all, she's a Soul Blast. And, or Soul Charge Mega Blast. And you can, you know, check the top card of your deck. Put it in top or bottom, which is very good. Uh, number two would probably be Pacifica. Um, if I were to, yeah, Pacific is one of my favorite cards. I honestly should put her on my top three waifu list. So it'd be Night Rose, um, Tarasu, Pacifica. So there you go. Uh, Pacifica, I really like because, like, uh, I've had her since the initial, uh, release of Bermuda Triangle and Pacifica just did a lot of work for me. I still have the deck floating around in my room somewhere. I gotta find it, but I haven't got the chance to use Pacifica much. And with the new cards, she's actually pretty viable nowadays. You just have to be very careful because three clumps in that deck are just ugh, crazy. But uh, there you go. And then for a third one, um, mm, it's tough. Baskirk. I have to say Baskirk. All three of my favorite. Uh, uh, retro Vanguards, or Great Three Vanguards are all Mega Blast units, and I wish Mega Blast was viable. The reason why I like Baskirk so much is because when I started out, I got, actually was able to pull off his Mega Blast really consistently. Um, the game was a lot slower back then, and pumping out 18k rearguards was actually like the thing to do. It was so easy to do. Um, and the deck played crits and stands because draws didn't exist and heals was whatever. Um, the game was a lot slower, people took damage a lot easier, and Baskirk was just such a good card to have. <laughs> Unfortunately, it only ever won once in this show, I think. Um, the other time it was Monster Frank who won, and that's whatever. <laughs> so yeah, those are my three favorite retro vanguards from back in the day. There you go. This next question comes from Jason Ling. How well did you do a national and what clan did you play with and go against? Um, I'm not going to really talk about it, but uh, in this video, I've vlogged about it. So if you guys haven't seen my vlog, go check it out. It's over in the card somewhere there. Uh, first of all, to correct your uh, question, I didn't go to nationals. I went to regionals. And uh, basically, I did really well. I got to round six. I, again, I kind of played myself in a way. I panicked when I was up against matchups I wasn't very familiar with. And I could have, honestly, I could have won the whole event if only I didn't screw up my own play. Uh, I played against the people, I played against the guy in second place, like, he was a great guy and all, but I felt like if I were to go against him in the final rounds, I could have come out on top, and Kagero wasn't, like, a matchup that I was worried about, so, and, um, the guy I interviewed for first place also said that probably if he met into 7Cs, he would have had a hard time against it, so, again, th this event could have been mine. <laughs> The gear Garnacle matchup wasn't much of an issue for me. I just, you know, freaked out over something small and my opponent got into my head and I lost. So remember guys, work on your poker faces. Play it, keep it to yourself. There you go. <laughs> All right, this is from Tom Catling. Um, he has a very long question here. How do you find your how do you find your favorite playing style? Did it just come to you as you tried them out? Did you try out a lot before finding out the one or several playing styles you like or did you have an idea before you started also how do you remember everything i have seen a bunch of your videos for on for online banger but every time i tried i would do horribly or mess up so none of my games would work 
add maybe one game that I managed to win. I'm not even sure if I did it right. Maybe one day I'll be able to go to regionals for Vanguard Weiss, but if I get to see me again. Also, I find it hard to make a good deck when I don't know what is a good site to buy cards from. Do you have any suggestions or know any good online stores that sell and are legit? <laughs> All right, so how did I find my play style to really get onto it? So it kind of transfers over from my Yu-Gi-Oh days. I always liked playing ga uh, decks that allow me to play like in my first two turns. So my mantra is to hit hard, hit fast. And um, it applies to pretty much everything that I do. I like being able to initiate um, stuff right away. So seven seas is like one of the main reasons why I like it so much. You just start, start playing from um, turn two. Uh, with Peter and then calling out a full field. I also like playing with uh, Musketeers for that same reason because Sylvia to Sylvia to Sylvia to something else is really, really dumb and really cool that you can do. Um, yeah, and I did try everything out. I've tried all the clans so far, even Token Rambu, and I hate Token Rambu. It's just you gotta figure out, like, you gotta know who you, who you are as a player and what you want to out of the game. I personally don't like having to wait till the end of the game to really pull off your combos. I mean, sure, if your deck is able to ramp it up, like in uh, Seven Seas, I'll just use that as an example, where you have the big play at the end, then that's totally fine. But if you have nothing but that combo, then you, then I just don't like it. That's the main reason why if when I was, uh, I, I do have uh, Genesis Revelation ready to go. I just haven't uh, finalized how I wanted to play it yet. I personally don't like the massive Soul Charge build of that deck because you don't do anything in the beginning. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, you're just super heavily reliant on that uh, wise men and getting your stand triggers into soul that you kind of knock yourself out of all the potential combos that you can be doing and stuff like that. So there you go. Uh, I like Magus because you can play again right from turn two. You can start doing your plays and stuff. But yeah, I, I don't like having to wait to do things, which and relying on specific setups that your opponent has to do to really do anything. So that's how I figured out my play style. I just tried, tried everything out and that's how I did. How do I remember everything? Uh, I read. <laughs> um, it kind of goes with your uh, second question here. How do I find stuff and build decks? So I use this app called Carfed Vanguard Database. Um, I'll probably put a link to it in the description uh, leading to the uh, Android and the iOS. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on iOS, but I know for sure it's on Android. Basically, in my free time, I look through the card lists and I read stuff. Um, Again, when I pick, when I decide to build a deck, I usually focus on one unit and then work around it. It's kind of like how in Pokemon you build a team around a one-two pair. Uh, that, that's a completely uh, different thing. I won't talk about Pokemon even though I play the game competitively. But yeah, I basically just take time to read everything and then kind of re figure out what things do. Um, get a general idea how things work. That, that's like how I uh, go about learning other uh, clans as well. Um, you really just gotta get out there and do the studying. You gotta read, you gotta play around, play with friends who have the deck. For sure, that's how you get the best idea out of it, because uh, if you're playing it just yourself and your theories, you're not gonna have a good uh, understanding of the deck, because someone else is gonna see something that you can't see. So there's that. Yeah, that's, a th and uh, do I know any good places online? So uh, I shop online using TCG player. I mean, I know there's a big kerfuffle about it, but sometimes it's the only thing that you can have. I use face-to-face -face games. Um, by the way, I'm not promoting, or not paid by these guys, whatever. Just say that I'm doing it. I just like these things. I use face-to-face -face games because it's Canadian. Uh, it's cheaper shipping for me, and it's a lot easier to get, it's a lot faster to pick, uh, get. So there's face to face, and then if I can't find a card, I go to eBay. Uh, I've been, I haven't been uh, screwed over by eBay just yet, so I, I only honestly only use eBay as a last resource. So if I can't find it on either uh, face to face first or TCG after, then I go to eBay, and that's that's where I get my stuff. So hope that answers your question, Tom. <laughs> All right, this next question comes from Chris Orko. Do you enjoy the anime more or less? Uh, as much as the game itself. Um, the way you wrote it there is kind of weird, dude, not gonna lie. Do I like the anime more or do I like the game more? Um, I like both. <laughs> I like the game because I love Vanguard, the game is great. I love the anime because it's actually pretty well written. Um, it's The characters are there, I love it. And uh, when they how they handled the game itself in the show, it takes it very seriously. It's not like other card game animes, like say Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, actually, the only other card game anime I can compare it to is Yu-Gi-Oh! Because Buddy Fight is also 
done the same way as Vanguard. Whereas Yu-Gi-Oh, they have some exclusive stuff that's only in the show and they change a lot of the rules. So, like, when I watch Vanguard, I actually learn how to be a better player watching the show than I do, say, watching Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's what I like about the show. It really just promotes the game that it's based, or that's themed around, whereas Yu-Gi-Oh! It's kind of like, oh, hey, let's do something amazing and then pull a card out of thin air. I mean, it does happen in Vanguard, but there's, like, very rare occasions. And most of the time, they're actually pretty legit, so there you go. Uh, so, to answer the question... I like them the same. Yeah. Alright, the last question that is shown uh, that you guys answered, that, that you guys put on my thing here. Oh, I'm, I'm rambling, sorry. Uh, Tupper Hunter, why aren't you in Vanguard Weekly if you don't know what that is? Watch the Leap Joker series again. But, uh, the reason why I'm not in this is because I have no clue as to what that is. Simply put, don't know what that is. Can't really say why I'm not in it. Uh. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please interact with me more. Uh, please follow the social medias down below. If you want to get in touch with me, you know, chat. I'm very open to chatting with you guys. If you ever want to pick my brain at deck building or my opinion on something, I love talking about the game. So if you guys ever just want to chat or just get my opinion about something, feel free to hit me up on Facebook. Uh, you could also put in the comments. I'm typically pretty good at uh, responding to the comments. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, you can. I, it's mostly there just to notify when videos went up. Uh, I'm also on Instagram if you want to get to know about my more personal life. So there's that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. My fellow Vanguards. Share it with someone who you think would enjoy. And as always, be sure to stand to the occasion. And I'll see y'all in the next video I make. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye.